So I, I can speak about my idea if you want. Yeah, let's go ahead and get started with yours. I, I was watching some uh, some videos uh, about virtualization and stuff, and somebody noted that um, you know snapshots are great, but you're really not that interested in the snapshots. You're interested in do the restores work, right? Because mm -hmm. uh, creating a snapshot doesn't help you. The restore is the one, the thing that helps you, and um, it's good to actually be able to verify that the restore works so you can know that you have a working backup. Um, so the, the thought is maybe we can, uh, you know, take the snapshot and then if somebody specifies with a, a flag saying, hey, I want to verify this, that it restores it to a separate VM, starts it, runs some verification, and then, you know, once the verification passes, it'll mark the snapshot as verified. I think it's an interesting idea that a couple of problems I could see is um, you would then have two copies of the same VM running um, with the same with the same MAC address um, and also potentially like does the like running of that VM uh, cause you know the state of the system to change in any way that you might not want to happen. Right. Those would be the two kind of things I would uh, I would wonder about. Like, well, we could example, use the clone API to make sure that um, we have two VMs running. But <laughs> I think to me, the more, I don't know, important thing is like, uh, what would the checks be and, and what works, you know? Like, I think... Yeah, um, but because that, that was the difficult one for me too what, what, yeah. what does it mean works right uh yeah because it, it's like yeah might not be enough. you know starting up i think most of the time you know most file systems will let you start up but it's possible that um you know if it wasn't shut down cleanly or, or it's possible that not uh you know may not be in the same state so uh, you may be able to start your VM, but, you know, perhaps your, you know, SQL Server database is messed up or something. So, um, okay. I, unless... I know some other uh, open source hypervisor has this particular feature. So we, we could look at what they uh, use for a uh, verified condition. See if that makes sense. That's that's where I got the idea from. So. What are the what are the failure modes that we're most uh, concerned about protecting against? Well, you you don't know that the snapshot actually restores properly. That's that's I guess the the main problem, right? I've made a snapshot, great. I think I have a backup, but now when you know stuff goes wrong and I want to restore it, do I know if my restore actually works? Yeah, so like the two cases that I can think of <clears throat> that I think we've seen with the Valero tests is that for some reason Valero doesn't pick up a certain resource that was needed. Um, and then the other one is uh, if there's an issue with uh, calling the operating system quiesce. So those are like the two, I think the the main ones. And I wonder if, the, you know, is there more that we can do at snapshot time uh, to detect those issues? I think we're already checking, like, you know, the snapshot gets marked as problematic if we don't think the we asked got run correctly. But yeah, I'm just trying to think. Um, this was definitely just a, a random idea uh, I, I saw yesterday, so I, I haven't mm -hmm. really thought about it too much, but I, I thought the concept was very interesting. Um, so I know that, oh, sorry, go ahead. One of the things they mentioned is that uh, to solve uh, one of the problems you're talking about is, uh, let's say I, I have a disaster recovery site that I can run these VMs on, that I run the verifications on the disaster recovery side so it doesn't interfere with what's going on on the primary side so something like that 
So I know like Overt had a snapshot, like a VM snapshot preview feature. So you could, in the UI, you could say uh, preview and it would actually run the VM from that point and you could check it and then you could mark if you wanted to uh, keep that or, um, or what, you know, if you wanted to revert to it for, for real or go back to what's, you know, the actual original VM. So something like that could be interesting. And in that case, it's a bit more interactive, but it would provide a way to um, to check it. I don't know, if, you know, you would want to implement that only for virtual machine snapshots, or if you'd also want to implement that for uh, somehow for like a, a Valero-based backup but it's something you could do. And it would be basically what you're saying, but it'd be more like driven by a specific API call. And then it's up to the user to decide what, uh, to evaluate whether they like it or not. Right. Yeah, to me, like, yeah, I mean, maybe there's something we could do. So if we're talking about in the context of our VM snapshot API, um, yeah, I mean, maybe we could do something, but I also think if someone is using that API, um, I don't know. I think for more the admin case, you know, no one's going to be using our VM snapshot API. And if, if some, so regular user, I don't know. I mean, it, it's important that their stuff works, but I'm less concerned about them. And as far as this general use case of verifying backups, or verifying restores. Um, that, I think that should be the domain of like a Valero or a um, Kasten or whatever the backup um, software is. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, it's definitely the uh, the wise advice around this stuff is you don't uh, you don't have. Uh, you're not really protected unless you test that protection, which you know why is why like anybody who sets up disaster recovery or any of these kind of things uh, really ought to have a, a test window periodically where they're checking this stuff to make sure um, so that when they actually need it, they know it works. Cool. Yeah, I mean, someone is using the VM snapshot API. I could imagine they have a pipeline that you know. They could extend a pipe, you know, so snapshots are kind of on demand now anyway. So they're probably triggered by like some pipeline job or um, if, if they if they were, if someone wanted to build like, a, you know, um, uh, admin level uh, backup and restore strategy based on VM snapshot, they're probably using it in some sort of pipeline on a scheduled basis. And they could extend that um, pipeline that calls, you know, create snapshots since we don't have like, you can't schedule them or anything. Um, and then just, yeah, call the clone API to test it out uh, is the next step. Yeah, it sounds, sounds like we're, we're not like, it's sort of outside of our domain, uh, this particular use case. It's more either the, the the backup vendors or you know somebody that's actually using it should probably do it on their own but like i said i i also mm -hmm. I, I like the idea that that you know, there's something to verify that a snapshot is actually you know valid but it might be too much for us to do so. yeah it's interesting it's a it's an interesting idea so things Yeah, I just think our ultimate goal is to be like just another type of Kubernetes resource. So if this type of functionality is something that they need for some other resource, like, um, you know, VM should just work with that. Um, like, like everything else. Yeah, I, I guess the verification of a, of a restore should work for, you know, volumes and uh, volume snapshots as well, right? So. Yeah. All right. Oh, random thought. Yeah. Nice little discussion. Yeah.
All right, so let's jump into uh, triage of those CDI issues. So the first one that uh, Elvaro should be was a slow imports. Yeah, that's the key question. What what version? Because we've um, we've made changes. Also, now, maybe it's yeah. Go ahead, Alex. I was going to call on you. So maybe it's worth to ask if uh, if they have uh, which scratch space storage class is being used there. But I guess that's a follow up to the version. You can just uh, get that information later. Yeah, I wonder if it's possible to, are we um, hitting any of the uh, C groups issues? Uh, either with V2, is it throttling um, due to memory constraints, or, uh, you know, if it's V1? Uh, I guess I don't know if they would be able to be running here. We didn't merge. Did we merge your fallback to uh, direct IO yet? Uh, we didn't, but we, in this case, we would see like OM kills. But uh, since I don't see anything about that in the issue itself, so I don't think it's it's specifically that issue. But they could be using uh, some kernel that has the the issue we had a few months ago. So that's all possible. Yeah. OK, sounds good. Well, I guess the key question was asked by Alvaro, so we'll wait to get some more details on that. Uh, next one, we have an history ID failure. Um, so they're saying that Go 122 does the correct malloc, but, but Go 121, which we use right now, does not. I guess we could open up the change log and uh, find find that change, because it, it does sound like uh, their theory is uh, very likely to be true. Yeah, and I suppose with you know, I think go for S three ninety is newer, so kind of bugs like this maybe wouldn't be that surprising. Um, I guess I don't know. Is it just one of those things where this issue we just allow it to exist until we update to the next go link? Uh, yeah, I was meaning to update to one twenty two anyway, so I can s assign it to me. And the newest one is missing their explanation on how to pull an image from S3. Mm 
my first guess is is they have a backslash n in their base sixty four encoder uh, username or password. Okay. And I think I actually asked them. Um, yeah. Yeah, okay. that's a good, good, good possible suggestion. Um, and I guess we can go back to, are we missing, uh, are we missing uh, documentation? I don't think so. I didn't actually realize we had this much uh, information about CDI in the Cupid user guide. So let's go. We have a uh, an issue open to add more uh, documentation about the uh, data volume APIs. Let's speak about it. We we have documentation in the CDI repo. Right. Yeah, I think what I wanted to do, I think, was eventually kind of curate that documentation into more of like that user guide type of format, um, which is a little bit of duplication of information. Um, but I think that people are normally looking at the Qbert user guide and not the for example, like the Qbert repo itself for docs. All right. Uh, so that, I think unless there are any other issues that we should visit, does anyone have uh, another issue that we should discuss? Maybe we can sort them by recently updated and see if there's any updates on old issues because it's been a while since I last checked them. Go down and take a look at the most recent updates. Next, we have a PR. with the little bar on the top of this. Let's do it. Okay. okay, cool. We have an open PR for this one. I don't think that one, this one is in good, good shape for right now in terms of the process working. It's from Michael. Yeah, I, I reopened that so we have a reminder to get rid of this uh, fork. Okay. Do we have, uh, have, they, have they merged the PR that we want yet? Uh, yeah, they, uh, they did it themselves and it landed in... Uh, 129, I think. So we should should be able to switch already. Okay. Yeah, I think, um, Alvaro, did you mean sort by like, uh, not the most recently updated, but um, uh, oldest update, right? I think the, I think you sorted by the most First, recently updated. Um. What do you mean? Sorry, the, the the sort that we have here now are the most recently updated. Wouldn't yeah. it be more useful to sort in the other way, like the ones that haven't been updated in a while? Mm, okay. No, I don't I know. Mean, uh, 
if, if it's if it's been uh unless it's been up like hasn't been updated in a uh, yeah the, the ones that haven't been updated in a long time are the ones that are more concerning than the ones that have been updated okay. last week yeah so i did that uh let's take a look at the oldest one I think this is for uh, Rooksath. They want to run a like a smoke type test on CDI, and they need some way to pick a minimal set. Yeah, I think we have a Jira story for this one on our backlog. Yeah, I think it's probably just a matter of uh, labeling a set of uh, of tests that we consider to be fundamental, right? And then you could invoke the the functional tests to select that label. Something like that. Yeah, that, that should pretty much it. So... Okay. This is the cash, uh, cash option. Given Alex's most recent stuff, do we really like we're trying to be more intelligent about it? Do you think this is something we should still do? I don't think so. Yeah, that's what I, I was actually going to suggest that. Maybe Alex, you could uh, add a comment in here about uh, your PR that we're looking at doing. Uh, I, I, let's just double check the reasoning for it. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, it was cash not here. So that's making it uh, taking a long amount of time. So we actually don't have cash done. We changed it, uh, but then now we also have the uh, the option to refer back to cash done as well. I think exposing the API is uh, it's really hardcore. It's uh don't want to co confuse users with this. But it, uh, it's the first time I see that the, like just the amount of time it takes to import bug someone this much because of the cache mode. Like we, I didn't heard, I didn't hear that complaint before. At least not to an extent that somebody really wants this so, something so low level to be configurable. Silence while I think all that or close to comment. Okay. okay. And then let's go to CDI data import comments filled with this error.
I would have said registry resource was a data body classification. Oh, because we don't support uh, HTTP for um, data import from. Yep. Okay, so we I know that uh, Edo is working on uh, this, I believe he still is. So, um, I suppose this would be closable once the registry source or the HTTP source gets supported for data import. Yeah. I do think this is a weird error though. It shouldn't automatically change the uh, the source to registry here, which is what it looks like it's Oh, never mind. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So I think there's nothing else to do on this one for now. Uh, storage profile needs to be patched for a rancher local path. Did we get this done yet? Didn't somebody help us uh, get this done? I just forgot to attach a PR. Maybe there's something linked. Profile is oh, here. This is. Um, maybe it, yeah, no, it was definitely a CDI changed and I, I think it happened like, uh, somebody just contributed that, um, I'll try to find it. It'd be great comment. if they said what the provision of string was. I don't really care about the local path provision. Um, <laughs> I know I'm not like a, a procedure guy, but I feel like the, the stuff, and I hate to say it now since we've already looked at a bunch of issues, but we should like update each of the issues that we've talked about so that um, when we do this next time, we don't go over them again. Okay, I can take care of that. Yeah, yeah that's a good point. Thanks for mentioning it, Michael. Okay, so for this one, All right, so uh, can we have somebody maybe follow up with this one? This should be an easy one to close. Um, I guess we need to understand what the provision or string is for the local path, uh, unless that's just what it is, but it should, I would hope it has a more uh, canonical provision or string than just local path. Yeah, I'll, I'll check. I'm pretty sure I saw a PR for that. Okay. Easy one to All right, so that would count as the update for this one. All right. Um, feature gates for flag for allowing CDI workloads to run as roots. We have a zero issue for that. Yeah, I mean, I haven't heard much clamoring about this lately, um, but I think it's still something we want to do. I think that I think that um, there was just a lot of noise around when we when we initially made the switch over to non root. Didn't uh, Kubevert? Or aren't Kubert in, in the process of uh, finally like the last straw and deprecating it? They're getting rid of the test lanes. They're not getting rid of the actual uh, feature. Are you sure? As far as I recall, yeah. I think they're just getting rid of the test lanes. Right. Let's see if I can find the Kubert dev. I recall they wanted to wait for like uh, the, how do they call it? Uh, dynamic resource allocation to pods, you know, like passing your GPUs to pods. 
and then they'll they would just like get rid of the code itself. But I may be wrong. Yeah, I mean, I think that this is something that's always um, it's all. I, my um, hunch is that there's always going to be some weird case where we're going to have to go back for root like point zero 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 one percent of the time or something. <laughs> But I yeah, I'm better than we get on a few zero like the the SE Linux uh, people had to deal with for the longest time. Where anytime somebody was something was broken, the first the first suggestion was always to disable SE Linux, and then it works. You know, but like uh, that's not really the right way to fix it. I guess we don't necessarily need to care about that, but if you end up having a bunch of users that are in a complete duration. That um, we don't ask for, we don't prefer, like that's what the different kind of want to steer them into fixing the problem in the right way. They can't do it. Yeah, I, I understand it. And so, really, let's just get like how much we want to ask that. I would say probably not that much. Adam, your audio is not great. I made really? a, I made out about. 30% of that. I don't know if others uh no no it's uh it's like your uh your laptop's mic gets picked up instead of your real mic. Okay, let me try that. Um I attached the design document and they are looking to remove the feature itself. But again, it's kind of on hold for the same reasons you're advocating for the feature is that they want this uh, beta of uh, dynamic resource allocation to arrive. And, you know, well, basically, they just want the escape hatch, same as you. So uh, we, we could work on this for CDI as well. Um, so when should we update uh, this initially with just so we can just say like um, maybe just a cross link to the design proposals so uh, the people that initially suggested this can uh, maybe it gives them the motivation or something like that so is there a design proposal or just a design proposal? Uh, there's a design proposal, uh, if I heard you correctly, and I attached it to the meeting chat. Uh, yeah, I attached a direct link to the proposal as a separate message. Okay. Um, I do not know how to handle the the audio settings. Um, how unusable is the audio? So, do you guys know where to find the audio control? So, uh, maybe it's just me. I it got your audio got a little worse. Really struggling to. Yeah, yeah, I, I, it's tough, Adam.
Uh, there's like a little arrow next to the mute button that lets you pick up the correct uh, mic device, but it's probably broken for you. Yeah, I guess uh, I can't share, but uh, if you go back to the issue page, you can just uh, go for the next issue. Right, so uh, this probably has comments. Okay. Pretty sure I saw a PR for this and yes. and it wasn't closed one. Yes, they're, they're still working on it. Uh, it. They're gonna do it in several steps. And I think the first step, the PR is there, but it needs to be signed and squashed before we can actually merge it. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I guess for this is just business as usual. Yeah. Um, cool. And that's like the bigger issue that it encapsulates like everything related to S390. I think we already covered that in one of the grooming meetings. Um, basically, we... Oh, okay. So we don't know the reason yet, but I was suggesting that uh, they increase the verbosity so we can help more. But there's no, uh, we can't know for sure it's the same issue un un unless they give us the output from the TAR process. From my experience, it could be, um, could be many reasons for it. For example, um, we recently backported some, um, some code that skips the lost and found ext4 file. So it could be that if they're using old CDI or if they're using newer CDI, it could be that issue that you just opened up. So really, it's uh, it's really uh, important for these tar cases to open the to increase the verbosity and uh, and report back.
Yeah, the honest. Uh, we have periodics building. Uh, building the arm containers. Uh, we're, we're just not putting it in in the, like a single uh, thing in Quay. So we, we don't have an actual uh, release. When we make an official release, it doesn't make the official arm release either. And, and we just need to spend the time on actually doing it. You know, we'll have all the pieces. We just need to put it together. I'm not sure I'm hearing any of you guys now. Yeah. We're here. Yeah, this, this is um um I've been working on this in the background for a couple of weeks. It's like sixty percent done. Um, but yeah, there should be something eventually. A lot of moving parts. Same person from uh, from one of the other issues, but it, it's like a different, yeah, it's a different. Uh, yeah, I, I remember spending a lot of time to to understand that. It was just like a, a typo. Um, they didn't mean to use the PVC API on the data volume, but they never got back to us to confirm. So maybe just if they could just try the suggestion and I think it'll be fine. I think we're at the sort of big points here, and I apologize for my pocket issues. Thanks everyone for joining. Thanks, Adam. See you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Goodbye. Bye-bye.